find some people that can can do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Uh, uh, okay, without introduction, just like uh, the, um, when we ran the uh, rerun uh, Brando's notebook, we produce uh, uh, new IDs for sentences, and then also in the version for paragraphs, also a new IDs for pa uh, paragraph sections. That means when we have three persons working on, for instance, on uh, sentences. The person working uh, just on sentences produces also new IDs for sections from which those sentences coming. And person working just on section produ uh, produces also new IDs, which are of course generated uh, uh, like uh, randomly. That means that uh, IDs from one notebook will not overlap with IDs uh, from another. IDs, paper IDs are always the same because are already provided by the authors of the, of the data set. But uh, like sections IDs and, and uh, sentences IDs are something that we produce. Uh, we produce, uh, uh, so uh, yeah. So I think we need to figure out how we can uh, tackle this, this, this problem. I mean, like I, I will share this on, on, on Slack. So some smart solutions so that uh, when we have, uh, let's say two outputs in the sense sections, uh, paragraphs and then sentences so that the IDs overlap. Uh, when we, for instance, somebody is reuse two or three data sets at the same time and they will skip between data sets so that it's uh, yeah, searchable. Is it clear? I mean, that's yeah. It's, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's, a, I think, minor technical thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no magic here, just to be cautious and to remember that there is a such a thing as a sentence and paragraph ID. Uh. I think what, what can be useful uh, if we can can make a really small collection, like, I don't know, 100 uh, documents and uh, everybody will, will get a pipeline from Brandon installed and we'll just produce uh, Produce all these sentences and uh, all required collections, and it, it will become our reference uh, model basically. Okay. So every time we'll, we'll, when we'll get new uh, updates of new documents, first we can run it and to see if it works, and after we, we can just scale it up and on. Yeah, I uh, mean, like mm -hmm. that's that, that's that's the, the the idea. So that's that's why I ask people just not to write, not to try to write on everything, but first just to have a nice notebook, Python notebook, and mm -hmm. then we can compare three versions. Uh, and everyone can of of course work on every version of the notebook. Like for, it's not because I ask certain persons to do certain version, but of course you, we can exchange it. Just a proposal so that there is any type of structure. And this, I think it's also important, we need to watch out because there are new, like in this new data set from Kaggle, there are some, I think two or three new features that are that uh, weren't present in, in the previous, in the last version. It's I think that the link to uh, archive and uh, archive ID or something like that. So uh, we can also to put, we can put it in metadata or something like that. So yeah, about metadata. Um, so uh, I give up. Yeah. So <laughs> I collected uh, Altmetric a few days ago, and I've discovered that metadata uh, file actually contains uh, fifty-five uh, thousands of records, not fifty-nine. So apparently they forgot to update it. And guys, if you s hear me, please do that right now. <laughs> Okay, so and so so the the uh, for instance to 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 put in my two cents about like some uh, weird things about the, the the original data sets, it's for instance the fact that uh, the size of the when we use uh, spacey our science spacey uh, we need to look at the maximal length of the like tech, the, uh, of the raw text we can. Uh, put in uh, to process at once because some texts are extremely long. I mean, I, I don't know, they're a chapter from a book or something like that. And uh, Spacey uh, throws an arrow out. And of course, it's, uh, if it's some, somewhere in the middle of the pipe, I mean, in the middle of the data, when we start to pre-process everything at once, it will be a crap. 
uh, in the sense that uh, it will exp I mean it will uh, break down. So I'll just uh, uh, go such a small thing like the length of the text to uh, to to adapt the the maximal length uh, in space. Still some questions. Okay, because if, otherwise I think that when we are happy with what we are doing and what we have, uh, we, we can finish, I mean, like. No, I, I actually have news. And ah, okay, yeah. It's great news because we finally managed to get hypothesis tool okay. uh, up and running in our infrastructure and uh, we are busy with a uh, plugin for Chrome and for Firefox, but it's already integrated uh, in our website. So basically the way how it works, you can select any sentence in, in paper and you can create annotation. Uh, first, you should register your user, confirm uh, email, and after you, you can get uh, access to our hyp hypothesis. And the way how it works uh, is exactly the same like uh, our infrastructure already uh, operating. It just sends an all requests to Elasticsearch and uh, from different collections we can get uh, yeah, actually from hypothesis collection, we can get all annotations. So we can get the same sentences uh, annotated by human. Okay, oh, good. So yeah, so, uh, so um, and you can, of course, you can use like multiple persons annotated the same sentence so that we exactly. have Exactly, yeah, yeah. So basically uh, now our goal is just um, to, um, to extend this functionality and uh, to uh, annotate with uh, artificial intelligence first. So we will do like, we will run a, a Brandon pipeline and we'll get all uh, enrichments. And after we'll create these annotations in, in hypothesis format and we'll connect to tool. So after people will open some article, they'll be able to see all sentences with some important information. And uh, after, you can select some sentences and, and confirm that this is right instruction. Yeah. So it will be kind of supervised machine learning system where you can actually uh, confirm uh, some knowledge and uh, you can build further in, into knowledge graph. Yeah, I mean like, because I think no, uh, there's plenty of uh, things from those enrichment in Brandon's notebook that actually we don't need to check out like lemmas. But for instance, UMLS or uh, like all those ontologies, I think it's the it's the most uh, you, I mean, like the most profitable uh, field well, of, uh, application of yeah. that. Yeah, because lemmas like even if some lemmas are wrong, it's like we don't we use just lemmas for elastic or something like that. So it's like uh, just for filter for filtering, and yeah. but it's for those uh, like. To use to 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 for to answer scientific questions, to extract let's say then this knowledge uh, graphs, mm -hmm. or to build up yeah that that's that makes a lot of sense. Cool. But still still my point uh, with uh, NLP toolbox we can only extract uh, named entities and uh, just entities like like from different ontologies, so no relations. Yeah. And if human will help actually to machine learning tool to uh to get these relationships from text uh we, we can uh, build a uh, knowledge graph directly from this sentence yeah it's it would be my question actually to, to to jeremy because maybe i because i'm not specialist and i still i mm -hmm. think i don't understand everything about uh those those uh, knowledge graphs but really there's no uh, single library that can extract relationships relations between uh, entities or it's impossible, or just it must be, be always done by, by humans? Uh, we, we can try to do that, but uh, you know, it will be really difficult to, <laughs> to, to present to medical experts that uh, there is some, some kind of artificial intelligence that can do this job, right? <laughs> yeah, so, <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's a just common problem, and uh, I think Christine actually can, can confirm that. <laughs> you know, in the way like like we do now, it's not uh, usable. So we really need uh, to uh, to build like kind of trusted knowledge, where 
Yeah. People with experts. We're knowledge. looking for like the knowledge within each paper, or like uh, no each sentence. In each sentence, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's basically corresponding to what Brendan already mm, produced. So all <laughs> sentences. And uh, now we, we need just human to confirm all, all these relations. No, not relations, but um, confirm pieces of text where you can find relations, I would say. Mm. Because we will see only object and uh, subject, but not relationships. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that sounds tough. <laughs> no, uh, but, but uh, if we'll get uh, um, like, I don't know, a few hundred of people, I think 50 thousands of papers uh, it's feasible to uh, annotate uh, I don't know like in one week or something full time just filter out some of the irrelevant papers right yeah, so again so, we could focus on some data collection that is specifically relevant to like one topic and then you just do this moderation the curation sorry curation pipeline yeah, so look, uh, well, what Brendan already did, uh, it's quite valuable because we can get entities and we can get all uh, important sentences. And now we, we just need to rank all these papers and to provide <laughs> easy interface for people to evaluate this. So uh, I don't think we'll get like 50,000 of papers. I already assumed it will be probably 800 or... And it will be just sentences, so it's not uh, every sentence in each paper, it's like... Uh, no, some... we, uh, you should be able to do both because you don't know what is inside of paper. But uh, you can see, if you'll open paper, you should be able to see selected uh, yeah. sentences where mm -hmm. artificial intelligence already found something interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not... it can be uh, converted to some kind of knowledge. Yeah. So, yeah. But really, there's no way to, to, to establish relations. I mean, because for uh, from the point of view, okay, this is a theoretical discussion, but for AI research, I think it's a very interesting task to like to establish relationships relations between object and subject. And uh, but yeah. look, uh, if you have a subject and object, and you have some relations that can vary from human, from paper, from topic. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I know that it's not uh, obvious and it's not like... Um, even for, for human, it can be not obvious. This is why we're, we're going to have uh, a lot of annotators actually annotating the same piece of text. A couple of times, yeah. Yes. Cool, I mean, uh, interesting. I mean, yeah, because, it, uh, but it's still, it's something you can automate, but the question is how? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like uh, what kind of relation are, are we thinking? Like, I feel like it could be topic specific or it's just like structurally the relations. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not not not, not necessarily a verb, but for, for instance, I don't know, adjective or some, uh, yeah, I mean, like plenty of types of relationships. Yeah, so yeah, it's like probably at least if you want to try to annotate it, we have to find a at least focus on one topic or something because it could be just yeah it could be just i don't know like what what kind of relations are we trying to annotate like yeah i mean like you have a like object a and object b and there is some logical relationship in the sentence between uh, the, in the I, sense uh, like uh, substance a uh, uh, is reactive to substance B, or I don't know, I'm in terms of chemistry, I'm an idiot, okay? But okay. Uh, it's like you have object A and uh, does something to object B, mm -hmm. or is uh, uh, related to object B, or, or, or the presence of object B uh, excludes uh, the presence of object A, <laughs> things like that. I see. Yeah, that's a, it's, it's right. I mean, like, can I, can someone confirm <laughs> my statement? Yeah, and also like so right now we we have those UMLS entities, so those are would kind of also limit what kind of relationship you're looking at, right? Because it's just all cells, genes, proteins. So then things outside of those entities, then you are not you you won't be looking at. Yeah. So. 
Okay, so uh, my question would be, do we have still some questions that we need to answer? Or it's- Nothing uh, from me for right now. Okay. So you are happy with your uh, requirements file, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm installing it all right now. <laughs> okay, that, that's good. Uh, yeah, it's weird that other persons didn't report that they have uh, some- uh, yeah, I I was wondering Visa. about that too, and I was looking at the th I, I was looking at the thread, and I was like, huh, I wonder if I'm uh, the only one. Yeah, this is okay. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe they 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 uh, pass over this somehow. But yeah. Okay, so uh, if there is no questions, I, I'm proposing to just to finish to, for today, and yeah, because. I think we will see each other in two days and we will see how much we already uh, will have done uh, with this notebook. Uh, okay. Sounds good. Okay, good. So thank you very much and uh, good luck with the notebooks. And if there are any questions pop up, so uh, please uh, notify us on, on, on Slack so that we can uh, find a solution. Okay, so once again, uh, have a good day, good evening, whatever. And yeah, see ya uh, in two days. Yeah. Yeah, you too. Okay. Yeah.